Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl. Welcome back to another Best Tech episode. Specifically, this one has a bit of a gaming twist just to kind of celebrate E3, which ended at the end of last week. And I'm curious which game you're looking forward to the most, which announcement you were the most hyped about. Breath of the Wild 2, or the sequel to Breath of the Wild, is the one that I'm eyeing. I know a lot of you were on the Forza train, maybe even the Xbox fridge. No lies, I honestly can't wait to pick one up for the studio myself. I know E3 was all online this year and a really cool memory that I kind of wanted to share before we start was this really cool controller I got at my first E3 2017. So this one is 64 out of a thousand and somehow I was lucky enough to pick one up with some orange bumpers on the top. Speaking of controllers specifically, the Xbox Design Lab where you can make your own custom controller, that's going through a bit of a refresh and update so you will be able to order your own custom controller for the Series X or S shortly, stay posted. But before we get to the main accessories, giveaway time. I always try to hook you guys up in these best tech series. Super simple to win any of these items. I'll ship out one, which is provided by one of our sponsors, Logitech. Super simple to win one of the items, guys. I can't ask for anything more than a sub to the channel, leaving a comment down below with your IG handle, of course, following me on IG, as that's where I'll DM you for the shipping info. And it's that simple. Let's get to our first item. So Logitech sent over a bunch of new gaming accessories for my setup, the first being the Pro X mouse. So this is the lightest mouse that I've ever used. I'm curious if they've got the actual weight on here. Had to bust out my drug dealer scale to show you. Let me just plop this on 2.2 ounces. So this thing is super light. It almost reminds me of when you get an accessory without batteries and when you stick the batteries in, it just gets way heavier. I guess I technically didn't need that scale as it is on the box. So 63 grams, 2.2, 2.3 ounces. You do need a lightweight mouse, or it's nice to have when you are playing a lot of games. I do specifically play a ton of RTS games, specifically a huge StarCraft, StarCraft 2 guy. I'm currently in Diamond League, nothing crazy, but it's just something that I like to zone into when I'm kind of turned off from my YouTube game. It's completely wireless. You get around 70 hours before you have to juice it up again. And you can see it's a very minimal design. It's just got your basic buttons, your two customizable ones on the side. Maybe not the best for RPG games where you need a ton of macros, but for the simple RTS or even first person shooter game, I think these are pretty solid. And to kind of match the white theme, I got the G915 TKL keyboard. I'm a big fan of the G19 series. I actually have my OG G19 for I think three to four years. I'm just gonna bring it on over here. Any of the B-roll shots you'll see, it is just covered in dust because I am not the best at cleaning my keyboards. But I found that I didn't really use the number pad and the smaller TKL version kind of reduces the footprint size. It is full RGB lighting, but I don't go for any of the fancy color displays. I just keep it to one basic color. Of course, orange is the choice. It's got a full aluminum frame, so nice and sturdy. The travel on it, it does have brown switches. So I do think it's that happy medium between say blue and red switches, some decent amount of travel on it. It's completely wireless with light speed. And what I like about Logitech's range of gaming gear, you can connect that all through the Logitech G Hub app. So you can see which devices you currently have active if they need any software updates. The one thing that I think Logitech needs to improve on though is some of the ports. For example, this being a new keyboard still uses micro USB to charge. And that's the same for the Pro X Super Light mouse. That's kind of a shame for having a $200 mouse, $300 keyboard. I know that's Canadian pricing. So if you are in the US, knock off say 50 bucks, but for premium, accessory peripherals, I think making that jump to USB-C is the next no-brainer for Logitech. And next off, to kind of complete the Logitech suite because they also do own blue microphones, this is the Yeti X. I'll keep this one specifically sealed for you guys, but the one I wanna talk about is their new, ish World of Warcraft edition. This one has actually been out since the end of last year and I did give one away from my tech unboxing haul gift guide series, but there is a small update with this. You can now get voice sampling snippets from World of Warcraft and kind of play them back. You do need to go through the Logitech hub like I mentioned and you can get iconic characters like Sylvanas. Thrall or even if you wanna to listen to a never ending loop of Murlocs yelling. <laughs> 
that could be your jam. I won't say that I've played WoW that much. I used to play a lot Burning Crusade days. I have logged on and played some of the new Shadowlands expansion, but I think WoW is just one of those iconic games that I'll never forget in my gaming history. I used to play Burning Crusade so many hours, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours when I was an undergrad, when I was a younger guy, sadly. Just doing raids with friends, shooting the shit with guild members, people that you meet online. It's just one of those games that is so iconic if you've ever played it. And I will say, it can go down in the best games of all time, probably in my top 10. The fact that it's still chugging along over a decade, I think speaks volumes and even reliving some of those moments, going back to some of those classic wow spots is, um, yeah, brings a little smile to my face every time. To round off the Logitech game for any of the accessories, these are the Pro X headphones. I wouldn't say that these are the best that you can currently get, but for the money, around 120-ish bucks. Once again, if you're in that Logitech ecosystem, I think these make perfect sense. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say the build quality is the best. So for example, on my right headphone cup here, you can kind of see this is cracking near the little joint. It doesn't click anymore into place. They're not obnoxiously hideous, like I think some gaming headsets tend to be. So yeah, they're minimal, they're clean, and maybe just take a bit better care of them than I would. <laughs> if you're looking for a really solid pair, these are more expensive, but wanna spend that extra money, these are the GSP 601s by Sennheiser or Epos. The sound better, the build is of course a bit better as well, but they are very clunky as you can see them on my head. So you have to kind of choose the clunkiness versus the sleekness, but um, this is, a second pair and you can always hardwire it if you want as well. Moving on to probably the best gaming laptop that we can kind of chat about. This is the Razer Blade 15 with the RTX 3080 GPU. You really can't do any better in the gaming laptop space than this. I know it will cost you an arm and a leg, probably a kidney to afford one of these, but if you have the extra money, want something premium, really look no further. We've of course got the 15 inch matte display with a higher refresh rate. And I'm actually working on a project with Razer to showcase how you can game on the go with this. So stay posted for that full review. This was just a little sneak peek. And of course in this video, if you are looking for a gaming laptop, I cannot recommend one more than this, as long as you've got an extra kidney to sell and just something to prevent all the fingerprints from gathering because it does collect one like no other. <laughs> Moving on over to a gaming specific phone. And I know a lot of you have mentioned that it isn't really necessary to have a gaming phone, but you cannot deny mobile gaming has skyrocketed the past couple of years. I think it increases twofold every single year. More people are playing mobile games specifically. So this one is the Red Magic 6, a gaming focused smartphone. So it's got that really cyborg-y look on the back, which I think a lot of gaming phones do share. But the most important thing for any gaming experience on a smartphone is the display. So this has a 6.67 inch full AMOLED 144 Hertz refresh rate display. So it's of course lightning quick, super responsive, and they're really upfront by saying it does drain battery life a lot. So if you aren't gaming specifically, perhaps tone that down to something like 90 Hertz. For gaming though, it does have a 360 Hertz touch sampling rate. So any movements with your fingers, this will be able to pick up the absolute quickest. Internally, it's got the Snapdragon 888 and the fastest RAM that you can currently get on a smartphone. So it is lightning quick. And I'm curious, would you guys spend more to have a gaming phone? I know from my initial Instagram poll, perhaps not, but as we get more into mobile gaming and the fact that mobile games look effing awesome these days, you can get near console-like quality on something as small as a smartphone. And with services like Xbox Cloud Services, you can play AAA titles like Gears of War, like Forza on a smartphone. So that's pretty cool. And what I think makes the Red Magic a really great gaming phone, which doesn't add any extra bulk. It actually has these two triggers on the top. So when you're playing in landscape mode, these are 400 Hertz triggers. So you can actually press them like physical buttons. That'll just enhance your overall gaming experience. And you don't have to have an extra controller add-on. If that is your jam though, I will kind of end off the video with my favorite. This is the Razer Kishi or 
Kishi, please correct me on my pronunciation, but this is a little controller add-on for your smartphone. You can kind of see how that shoots open and I am rocking the 12 Pro Max. So this is the largest edition or largest, I guess, spec that you can get and it still fits. And it does give you that tactile feedback for anyone that's an OG, say, Game Boy player. That's what I grew up gaming with. Having tactile buttons is just way better than pressing anything on a screen. So now you still have the full joystick control, of course the triggers on top, even a D-pad if you want. I think if you're looking for the ultimate gaming combo, you still have your normal smartphone, you don't have to get a gaming specific one, and keep the Kishi or Kishi say in your backpack when you do want to rock out and zone into a couple hours of mobile games. And yeah, I think that will pretty much wrap up the best tech episode gaming edition. Let me know which items that you just kind of saw was your favorite. And also very curious what game you were most stoked about at E3. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next ones. Peace.